Well, good morning, church. Hey, I'm going to start off today by saying that I've got a confession to make. I hear voices. Yeah, every day I hear all kinds of messages rolling around in my head trying to convince me to believe one thing or another. Now, normally I'd be disturbed about that, but I don't think I'm alone in this. Because I think if we're honest, we all, all would admit we hear all kinds of voices from all different sources each and every day. And while we may hear voices each day, the important thing is knowing which ones to listen to. A lot of men and women today um, hear voices that tear them down. And as a result, they don't believe they're good enough, smart enough, holy enough, or man enough. But the truth is that we obey the voices we choose to listen to, so we must be very careful about the ones we allow into our heads. You know, as believers, folks, uh, there's actually only one voice that we need to listen to, and it's the same still, small voice that Samuel heard as a child in 1 Samuel 3. Listen as I read from 1 Samuel uh, 3, the first 10 verses. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place and when his eyes had begun to grow dim that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was. And while Samuel was lying there that the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, Here am I. So he ran, so Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here am I, for you called me. And he said, I did not call. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again, the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Hey, did you notice in that, uh, in that scripture I just read that Samuel didn't get it right the first time? He didn't recognize the voice of the, uh, 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 as being the voice of the Lord. In fact, it took him three trips to Eli, his mentor, before he figured out that God was speaking to him. But we know, that, but we, but we know from the scripture that once Samuel zeroed in on God being the source of the voice, everything changed and his life was never the same again. The key to embracing and hearing God's voice of truth and rejecting the false voices that attack us on a regular basis is, is opening not only our ears, but our hearts to Him. And that means we need to dig in uh, deep to His Word and prayer. We need to spend time hanging out where He is most likely to be found through His Word and through prayer. And most importantly, we need to do what His voice tells us. Henry Blackaby said this, the willingness to obey every word from God is critical to hearing God speak. So my encouragement today to us is this, let's stop listening to the negative voices that bring us down. Instead, let's embrace and obey through the study of God's word and prayer the one true voice that really matters, the voice of the Lord. Let's pray together. 
Dear God, we just thank you for this reminder from your word today. And Lord, I pray that you would give us the wisdom and the discernment we need to hear your voice above all others. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a great day.